and she told me that as you know an SLP who doesn't stutter uh, using my comics uh, as a way to offer alternative options um, to or, or perspectives towards stuttering um, isn't coming from yet another fluent adult in his child's life that she could feel confident that's coming from me someone who stutters you know through my comments showing this kid hey here's what is possible Welcome to Some Stutter Law, Newfoundland Labrador's first podcast about stuttering. My name is Greg O'Grady, and I am a person who stutters and a co-host of Some Stutter Law, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering, along with my co-host. And my name is Caitlin Mayo. I'm a future speech language pathology student, and I'm Greg's co-host on this podcast. Some Stutter Law mission is dismantling and rebuilding stuttering. Let's start listening. Some Stutter mandate is in the spirit of Newfoundland Labrador humor, robust and frank interactive discussions. Some Stutter Law podcast aims to rebuild confidence and hope for today's and tomorrow's person who happens to stutter by dismantling stuttering myths stigma, stereotypes, and barriers. The objectives of Some Stutter Law podcast are supporting, raising awareness, and increasing understanding and acceptance of stuttering, providing people who stutter, their families, professionals, students, and the general public with current information, research, and resources about stuttering, and promoting advocacy and support for people who stutter. Today, Some Stutter Law welcomes Dan Rossi, Welcome back to Some Stutter Law, Dan. For a, Dan was with us uh, a few months ago, shortly after Some Stutter Law uh, launched. And uh, we, uh, uh, Caitlin and I have invited Dan back again because we, uh, we, uh, we have some exciting news to share with our listeners about uh, Frankie Banky. But, but for, for those listeners that have not met Dan, I'll give you a little introduction about Dan. Uh, Dan. Dan is a person who stutters and the creator of Frankie Banky, a cartoon character who stutters and the main character of his book, Stuttering is Cool, a Guide to Stuttering in the Fast Talking World. And a little bit more about Dan. Uh, Dan is a digital strategist from Toronto, Canada, Daniel enjoys helping others grow comfortable with their speech through his podcast, Stuttering is Cool and Stuttering Stutter Social. The online global community is co-founded and using group video chats. Dan enjoys listening to music, astronomy, cats, particularly of the L-O-N-L variety, the Lapid <laughs> Lab variety, that. <laughs> and, and, and repeatedly lifting things up and putting them back down again in the gymnasium. Dan blocks on his L's, M's, and N's and stutters on vowels like E's and A's. So well, you know, welcome, Dan. Now, just to let our, <laughs> just to let our listeners know that one of the re main reasons why we, we have invited you back and it's always nice to talk to you, Dan. Caitlin and I Likewise. enjoyed our eyes. <laughs> Caitlin and I enjoyed our conversation last time. But Dan just post. Dan recently posted a uh, post on his Facebook page, and I found his post fascinating and contacted him to suggest that he uh, come back on uh, as some sort of law to talk about uh, his uh, he, he, his his presentation with almost a hundred plus speech language pathologists across the Czech Republic and Slovakia at a virtual conference organized by a few people. It's interesting enough that Dan shared various ways that his cartoon character, Frankie Banky comics have been used in speech therapy sessions from discussion starters to role playing to art therapy. And then, and so when, when I contact, as, as I was saying, once I read this, I thought to myself, we, we need to get Dan back on some sort of law. 
And I thought to myself, well, it's, it's great that he's contacted a speech language pathologist in the Czech and Slovakia, but, but if, what about Canada and Newfoundland? So then, would you know? Would you okay, before you continue? Would you know? Would you provide our listeners an overview how how this transpired for you to contact yeah. these SLPs? Okay. Well, I can assure you that I wasn't shunning or uh, leaving out or ignoring <laughs> or outcasting, if that is a word, uh, Canadian uh, SLPs. Actually, the invitation came to me from the Czech Republic uh, quite out of the blue. It was out of nowhere. There I am doing whatever it is I was doing that day, and poop comes a message on on the Facebook mess, messenger. So uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, in Brno, which is a city, uh, well, in the Czech Republic. Um, so there is a uh, not-for-profit organization. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I won't pronounce it. Um, but it has the word l l l l logo in it, if that helps. Um, and every year they have a conference. They have a conference for speech language pathologists. Um, and yeah, and I guess uh, maybe, um, I'm not sure how they came to learn about me, but I, but I have my suspicion that maybe somebody um, who, is, who was in the conference, uh, he was in my cartooning workshop. Uh, that I gave, gave at the uh, Congress in Iceland, the uh, International Selling Association Congress in Iceland. So I'm assuming that's, uh, that's, uh, that's how this all transpired. So uh, yeah, uh, that conference was a lot of fun because it was a whole brand new area for me because I never really quite, no, um, I only, no, not that I never quite knew um, how SOPs were using my comics and my book and even my podcast episodes in therapy sessions. Um, but I never had um, enough knowledge to fill a presentation. <laughs> so I went on a very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, I, I, I hit the ground running and I asked as many SOPs that I, that I knew that were using my 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 work um, to give me uh, their examples of how or their stories of how they use my um, uh, comics uh, in the therapy sessions, which blew my mind because I never once ever imagined uh, my comics uh, doing anything beyond hopefully creating a chuckle you know, with the, with the, some of the jokes, you know, that I put in my comics. Um, and as well as giving that sense of connection, right, that shared experience. Yeah, I know what it's like to have someone try to finish my sentence uh, or uh, someone give me a funny look. So, uh, and it was a lot of fun um, uh, presenting to about 100 speech uh, language patholo pathologists. Yeah. So then, would would you be able to share how, how you know in, in what context or what ways are the SLPs using you, Frankie Banky in their sure. sessions? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> sorry, it's been a while since I've given the presentation. So let me try and remember in the order that I gave it. So, uh, I I hope I can mention names but it, just in case I can't I won't mention names so um so uh, uh so one speech language pathologist in the United States um he used so he uh, actually showed me a picture he sent me a photograph of my comic and then underneath was the child's work so the child's uh, client and he was and he asked the child um write down all, all of the words you feel describe Frankie Banky, his personality, his characteristics. So on the picture were things like, were words such as creative, um, sly for some reason. <laughs> uh, ooh, I don't remember. 
sure. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to pull up the presentation of the picture in there. Um, Brave was one of them. Uh, and I think Courageous was uh, the other one. Um, so that started a discussion. And, and in fact, that's one of the uh, main benefits of using uh, my comics. And I, and I believe any comic really um, is that they could be used as discussion starters. So this friend of mine, or this SLP of uh, this SLP in the, the United States, who also happens to be a friend of mine, um, you know, in working with with the with the children, he finds, you know, he has says that, you know, it's often difficult to create discussion um, with to, with the children because when you ask them how was it, how was your day, how was school, how was your speech going they don't get into the details they just say it's fine or you know what's your favorite subject in school i don't know <laughs> so uh, he likes to use engaging activities uh to you know not even talk about speech and and then eventually to start asking questions about speech um you know uh and he also feels that or he notices that most SOP resources um, feel like school to the children. So any, so he's always on the lookout for a way to make a connection with the child. And he found that my comics make that connection because my comics tend to be funny. You know, I don't really um, uh, draw serious comics or drama or sad. Uh, although I do, add that because I'm talking about stuttering after draw, right? So, uh, but there's always a more positive spin to them. And that provides a great uh, opportunity for, for discussion you know, or questions like how, how did this make you feel? Or how would that make you feel? Or what did you think about Frankie Banky's reaction or actions or what he said or things like that? Um, other SLPs have shown my comics uh, to first introduce this cartoon character who stutters. Um, and again, you know, it makes that connection. Oh, this other character <laughs> stutters. Uh, one, one SLP I know of in the UK where she doesn't do group, ther group therapy, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So many times the child hasn't met someone else who stutters. And Frankie Banky is really the only or the first one, the first, well, quote unquote person <laughs> uh, that they meet who stutters. And what this SLP does is by introducing Frankie Banky and as well as Tiger, uh, the Tiger analogy, uh, she does two things. One, she introduces the idea that stuttering isn't something you can hide from, uh, something that's going to go away. Um, and there is this option that they could choose a more positive option um, uh, of you know, letting the stutter out, working on desensitization and you know the emotions and all that stuff. Um, the other thing she does is she also tells them that they're drawn by me, someone who stutters. And that's where that connection is also created. And, and it also helps uh, this, uh, this, this SLP as well because she doesn't stutter. And she told me that as you know, an SLP who doesn't stutter, uh, using my comics uh, as a way to offer alternative options um, to, or, or perspectives towards stuttering um, isn't coming from yet another fluent adult in this child's life, that she could feel confident that's coming from me, someone who stutters, you know, through my comics showing this kid, hey, here's what is possible. Um, uh, with this kind of philosophy that Frankie Banky and Tiger have. Um, I'm trying to think of other ways. Uh, the pins, the stuttering awareness pins that I sell, you know, the Frankie Banky. So for the listeners who may not know, uh, I sell these uh, in the shop. Um, pictures of Frankie Banky, you know, these pins, badges, uh, and with funny humor sayings. Um, sure, I stutter. What are you good at, uh, I'm worth waiting for, um, you know, stuttering is cool is also on uh, there. Um, side note, I also use humor because humor, well, it's my style, but it's, but it's also a great way to connect.
people. And so what this SLP does is she uh, buys them and she gives them to her child clients. And she first lets them choose which buttons uh, they want. And then they have a discussion about their choice behind the buttons, um, how or what they think their teacher or fellow students may react to uh, him or her wearing the button, uh, things like that, uh, if they would even be or, or if they would even feel comfortable wearing the uh, the buttons. Um, another SLP told me that uh, um, two of her clients told her that uh, they felt more confident as they wore the pins, the buttons, uh, as they gave presentations um, in school and they received positive feedback uh, from their fellow students. I'm trying to remember uh, something else on the top of my head. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> drawing comics. Um, using my comics uh, as a way to uh, start the art therapy part. So um, a speech therapist in Chicago, you know, I really feel like I should be mentioning names. No, my apologies. I should have gone and asked them first <laughs> before we met because I feel like I got to give them, I mean, at least give them some cre credit. Um, so uh, yeah, so this SOP in Chicago, what she does is um, she first shows in my friend Banky comics to give her, her clients uh, an idea of how to draw a comic strip uh, and also how to draw stuttering in a comic strip. Um, and, and then she lets uh, the kids uh, draw. And what she found was, so uh, you, so you, you, you would know how in comic strips, you know, you have your speech bubbles uh, denoting um, speaking out loud. And then you have clouds and small clouds pointing to the characters' heads, denoting thinking. So uh, this allows, so uh, yeah, so this allows the child to convey their internal thoughts uh, through their comics, through these thought balloons and, and, and also convey their external actions through, well, the actions of the characters, as well as, you know, the words that they say. Um, she also lets them role play as well. So they would draw a comic based, no, uh, yeah, based on the listener's perspective or rather what they think the listener is thinking and reacting to their stuttering. Uh, another SOP told me how um, one student drew a bullying, a bullying, bullying, can't even say that word, a uh, situation um, where uh, the main character who stuttered um, stood up to the bully and won. And then he introduced a new character, it was a new student in class who stuttered. And he told the student, uh, hey, stuttering is okay. Uh, another one, an SLP in the Netherlands, um, she has this, ch this uh, child client, I think he's 12 years old, maybe 11, well, well when he was 10, <laughs> uh, she had sent me, uh, she too had decided in, on my cartooning workshop in Iceland uh, two years ago, and so she got that idea of, okay, draw comics and therapy sessions, so in, so in this session, he drew a block like his block, what a stirring looks like. <laughs> so he drew a block. And my guess is she probably got that idea from Tiger, my Tiger character, who is a, a metaphor for Frankie Banky's stuttering, or yeah, metaphor for stuttering. Um, and he drew the block and the comic strip was, um, uh, the comic strip was, Sorry, I just got distracted because Zoom just flashed <laughs> a graphic in front of me, an animated graphic. I still have their website open um, behind our, our uh, video. Now I lost track of what I was talking about. Um, yes, the block showed up to bully him during a presentation he was giving in his class. So in his comic strip, he, he overcame the bu bully, like he, he uh, fought the bully and he won. And what I like about this story is that the child was so happy that he drew this comic and he couldn't wait to show his father when his father came to pick him up from speech therapy. Um, 
And then a few weeks back, um, in fact, I was in the dentist's office <laughs> waiting to get my teeth cleaned. And the same SLP sent me a message saying, hey, you know, I'm, you know, the child is back and we're about to start another comic strip. Um, and in this case, he drew a comic strip, uh, an, an, an elaborate story about a fox who couldn't howl because he stuttered. And he makes this, these friends with this frog and uh, this lake <laughs> and um, you know suddenly the wolf falls off off a cliff and he has to save himself by howling but he believes he can't do so because he stutters but he does it and and anyway and then again the child you know cannot wait to go back home and teach his twin brother um, how to draw comics and he has more plans to draw tons more so it's a great form of creative expression uh, creating comics um, and you know especially being able to view your comics from that or, or sorry view your stuttering from that point of view and I don't recall if we have, if I mentioned this in the previous episode that I was on your uh, your show in the workshops my cartooning workshops what I do is I have uh, participants draw a speaking situation and many times they would just stop going wow this provides such a different perspective uh, unfortunately i don't have any examples to give any case studies uh, but i but 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 i can say i also have them switch the ending sometimes if if they want to so if if it was a speaking situation that ended off with like a negative emotion or something terrible happening i have them switch the ending to a positive one and then they look at it go oh yeah it makes sense i, I just for for example uh you know tell them that i just stutter and then everybody agree or everybody says oh okay that's great <laughs> and then they continue on with their lives that's what the power of well storytelling right like since you know the dawn of time right sitting around the campfire <laughs> it's a great way to communicate uh, your uh, soul, right? Not to get so high, <laughs> a high level here, but I mean, that is um, one of the truths of uh, drawing comics or any other creative endeavor, whether it's woodworking, playing music, what have you. Uh, it's a way to communicate through your soul. And I don't mean that from a um, avoiding stuttering point of view. It's just another way to make a connection with your fellow human beings around around you. Well, Dan, I uh, oh, 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 I find you know I'm just uh, just listen, listening to you to you now, Dan. Really fascinating because it it really hits home how 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 Frankie Frankie can really sort of reach a child who is struggling with uh, his or her speech, and how you know how how a speech pathologist. Can really reach into the mind of the stutter, the the child, to help the child relax and become more in, uh, and and become more participatory in the session. And uh, so I mean, and and I'm I'm, I'm positive now that they, that they, that you know that there will be uh, you know that there will be a lot of therapeutic benefits from Frankie Banky. And uh, I'm wondering now, Dan, in terms of uh, could teachers, family, parents, caregivers, and other people, older people who stutter, use uh, Frankie Banky some, somehow in their own uh, therapy? Well, you know, what are your thoughts? Or is it too early to tell? I'm not sure I understand your question. Like if if they're allowed to use my comics or oh, if they, no, no, no. If, or if uh, they also, or if there are other stories I, I have outside of the therapy room, like speech therapy, like that kind of. Oh, no. What, what I'm saying is that because <laughs> Frankie Banky is being used in therapy with children, could older, like adolescents, oh, oh. older adults. Oh, yeah, for sure. And teachers use it. So, so oh, how, uh, how you, yeah, for sure. Would, would you be able to give some examples then? I don't know. I don't think I can. <laughs> I would have to really stop and think. Uh, you know, that's an excellent question. You know, when you have to, you no, know, when you make me stop and think, that's a very good sign. <laughs> that's a great question. Um, 
I would just from the top of my uh, head. Oh, actually, I do have an example. Yes, I do. So yeah, so the speech therapist in uh, the UK, sorry. Um, what she does is she likes to use both my sites that are stutteringisco.com and frankiebanky.com. And when she first shows them the tiger analogy of stuttering comic that I have, uh, usually I'm on the homepage of my stuttering school site. It, it's on both pages, but both the sites, but, but she also has the parent watch as well. She also introduces my comics to, to, uh, to uh, the parent and she uses, and she also, um, let me formulate my thoughts here. Uh, she also have, she also suggests to them that they read, that they read the comics together at home. So that way the, the family members are involved as well. They could also learn as well, uh, which is another aspect of my comics, my other agenda, <laughs> if you will, is, is I draw them to spread awareness, right? Because I've, because I show through my humor, this is what it's like to stutter. You know, this is what it's like to get the funny looks. This is what it's like when people keep saying hello, 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 when we're trying to talk on the phone. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the only example that I have, but I think it's it's a great example of showing that, um, yeah, whatever happens in the therapy room can also happen elsewhere. For teachers, I don't know. Um, uh, I guess so, you know, uh, you know, it's all about diversity now, you know, thank goodness. So uh, yeah, it's, you know, it, um, it can be used in, I guess, presentations, <laughs> uh, you know, or if they're, or if they have students in class, if they have that open communication about their stuttering, yeah, you know, um, I don't see why you not mention my comics. Um, uh, you know, I got to get my book in schools, <laughs> I got to figure out how uh to do that, to get that done. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dan, when I read read your post, I, you know, I, I, I shared, uh, shared, you know, your, your post with, with Dr. Paul Decker. And uh, Paul, you know, Paul, as, as you know, is the, is, is the associate professor with the Department of Linguistics at Memorial University here in Newfoundland. And uh, so, so, so Paul, you know, you know, Paul is planning on doing a program for his students, and it's called the Science of Stuttering and Open Educational Resource, a, a project by the NLSA Collaborative and in, in the collaboration with MUN. So the uh, just you know, just you know, just you know, just to give you uh, our listeners an, an overview of what the Science of Stuttering uh, program will be, the Science of Stuttering. TSS is a web-based module to be used as part of an existing university or college level course in phonetics, social linguistics, or clinical phonetics, but can also stand alone for individual use. It will be introduced, the science of stuttering, as a module in uh, Paul's fourth year undergraduate graduate course. Exper experimental phonetics at Memorial University in the fall of 22. And he, he's planning on uh, uh, using this, uh, incorporating stuttering into this, the science of stuttering. But as, as, as you're aware that he's really interested in incorporating Frankie Banky in, in his course as well. And he, he came up with a catchphrase for the module what can Frankie Banky teach us about stuttering? So, what's you know, what's your your, your oh, thoughts wow. about this? And, no uh, pressure yeah. <laughs> on and, 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 yeah. Sorry, Dan, and I'll just just let our let our no, 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 listeners please, know. Please, go ahead, yeah. Just let our listeners know that that, that we will be uh, Paul, myself, and a few other other people will be uh, uh, having a few meetings with you to to brainstorm how. Frankie, Frankie can be incorporated into yeah. the science of stuttering. So what are your thoughts, Dan? Yeah. Um, my 
book has been used as textbook or required reading in 10 universities across North America. Another thing that blew my mind, never would expect it <laughs> that to happen when I wrote my book. Um, so yeah, I mean, he could actually, uh, yeah, my, my, my comics could actually be used in that kind of a setting to explain um, stuttering, what it looks like, what happens and all that stuff, especially when it comes to stories and education or rather learning like that's what I mean when we learn concept right we we retain information better when it's told in the form of a story oh yeah that time Frankie Benke you know flooded his toilet and he had to call the plumber <laughs> you know and he was stuttering on the phone right so things like that um yeah it's uh and it's also exciting because I majored in linguistics when I went to my one year in university <laughs> before I left. Uh, so it's so it's interesting seeing everything come full circle. I, there was a time I wanted to be a speech therapist too. So it's nice to see that I took a completely different route <laughs> that didn't involve getting a master's. So, <laughs> so. well, I mean, uh, what you, you're saying now, Dan, and, and listing, uh, listing about how Frankie Baker can be used in Therapy is fascinating, and so in in one sense, you know, you you know, you were a quasi speech language pathologist. In one sense, <laughs> you know? I play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so then, yeah. like in, in terms of the uh, the comic strips, how many comic strips do you have? Or oh, you know, I never counted. Uh, I should know this, but I don't. I really don't know i never really counted uh there's my book there's the comic strips over on frankiebanky.com uh else there, you know my book was translated into uh french and i also produce french comics uh for the association Beguet Mont communication in quebec for their newsletter but i often also post the english versions too um uh i couldn't begin to maybe a hundred, maybe more, <laughs> maybe less, but that number is only going to grow because uh, I'm working on my next book. Uh, this will be kind of like the children's version or the version of my book, but catered to kids under the age of, we'll say, um, you know, preteen and uh, uh, under, um, and where Frankie Banky is in situations that are not revolve, like, or rather, the stories are not revolving around a speech as much it's more like he's just a main character who happens to stutter um and it's my goal to use that as a way to show that stuttering is just something that you do you have all these other strengths uh that you that you have i get the feeling i totally didn't answer your question <laughs> oh you know you you you, know, you uh... You answered the question, Dan. You really have. Okay, so, so, good. <laughs> so, Dan, I mean, you, uh, uh, you know, you also mentioned that you, you, you never thought that this would happen in terms of uh, Frankie, Frankie being uh, uh, used as a therapeutic tool within speech therapy. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit more? I mean, yeah, it, it's a it's a real shock to you. I, I feel. Yeah, it's it's a pleasant, a pleasant shock, <laughs> a pleasant one. Yeah, because. Um, I never sat down and think, okay, I'm going to create speech therapy resources and I'm going to address this and this and this and this and this. Because for the most part, I never knew what speech therapists needed, which is interesting because I have had speech therapy as a kid, but I can only draw what's my style what's my personality. So I, earlier I mentioned how I don't really write serious. I don't really write drama. Uh, it's all comedy. Uh, that's mostly because I grew up watching almost exclusively Loon, uh, Looney Tunes and Woody Woodpecker and all that slapstick stuff. Um, so the idea of I'm gonna draw something, people are going to like this and it's gonna become useful those are thoughts that don't come naturally to me, right? Um, you know how everyone is their own worst critic. It's that kind of stuff. And it's not until 
you hear back from the wild, so to speak. Um, you know, I, I can give you a few examples. Uh, the very first time might have been 2011, maybe, maybe even 2010, where I drew a comic and I posted it. It, it was just Frankie Banky stuttering his, his name. Um, and, uh, and I don't know, maybe a week later, a month later, I received an email from someone in India saying that they liked the comic, they printed it out and they have it hanging in their cubicle while at work. And that blew my mind because I was just sitting there going, somewhere on the other side of the planet has something I created hanging on his wall. Um, now, that as well as if it wasn't for the internet <laughs> and the fact that you know we had technology to help us connect to the internet, scan drawings, post them on the internet, you know, someone else on the other side of the world having the same computer and all that stuff or similar internet, whatever it is, this wouldn't have happened because traditionally, right, we would have had to have right a publisher, you know, someone you know, saying yes or no to approving selling my stuff. You know, we are in the age where anybody, you know, for example, yourselves, right? You and Caitlin produce your own radio show. It's may not be on AM or FM radio, but it's being distributed around the world to whoever wants to listen, subscribe, download, um, and, and also appear. <laughs> so uh, there's that aspect. Um, now, I just lost my train of thought. You were asking about, oh, yeah. And then hearing from SLPs and how they use my comics. Um, and also, I also interviewed a, a number of them because when I was doing research for my next book, uh, originally my next book was supposed to have been this giant plot. <laughs> but, I, but my style, again, my style are short stories, uh, which is what you find in, in, in the Starting is Cool book. It's newspaper comic style. Um, so uh, it was through my conversations with SLPs that I came to learn how and why my comics were a lot more than what I realized. Like here I am drawing a, you know, a comic strip of Frankie Banky in some situation that I think is, ha ha ha, it's a nice gag, a nice joke. Great, post it, go on with my day. Not realizing this has a profound impact on starting a discussion, right? Once in a while, I get feedback from an SOP either on Instagram or feedback from a person who stutters as well on one of the social, social networks saying, this is awesome. I love this. High five. I want to print this out, put this on a t-shirt. I want the poster, things like that. And, you know, and I would think, really? This one? Wow. I never would have guessed. Other times, I do admit, now that I've learned from the field, um, I do stop and think before I draw a comic or I think of a story, say, how would this benefit uh, either a speech therapy session, the reader? How you know, Do you think there's another way I can portray something or portray the situation that could be helpful? So having learned that, it does influence a bit, but really, there is no... Um, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a licensed speech therapist <laughs> and I don't have that education, right? So there's only so much I can assume, right? Um, it's just one, one, one stutterer talking to another through my comics. Um, I think that's prob prob probably the power of mm. Frankie Banky. Uh, going back to, yeah, the SP in the UK saying, you know, she's just another fluent adult to, uh, giving advice to this child how to speak. You know, she knows she'll never fully understand what's like to live with stuttering. Those are her words. And, and yeah, and Frankie Bing is coming from, so to speak, the horse's mouth. <laughs> I'm not, not that I'm calling myself a horse, but yeah. You know, just listening to you, Dan. We, uh, you know, we as people who stutter know 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 how challenging stuttering can be. It's, stuttering is very fluid. 
we have our good moments, our bad moments, we have our trail, uh, train wreck experiences of, of uh, stuttering. But you know, the is uh, the you know the more that I think about the therapeutic uh, uh, benefits for adolescents and adults, you know, I'm thinking now, uh, Frankie Banky, your comics can, can also be therapeutic for somebody who a person who stutters is going through a rough day just to to draw to play around with your comics with Frankie Frankie Banky because I think it, it also lightens up. Uh, the the uh, somebody who may be uh, anxious, depressed, whatever it, it gives them a different perspective, and I think that you know that, that you know that that will be emotionally uplifting. What 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 are your thoughts there? Yeah, actually, originally that was my plan with my podcast. Everything will be positive, and then. But over the years, so I first started my podcast in two thousand seven. And over the years, I learned through, you know, Facebook groups, various stuttering Facebook groups, not many people like their stuttering, and especially <laughs> stuttering is cool, the phrase, which, you know, was meant to be like flipping a con, like, like, uh, like what I feel is an old outdated concept up, up the side down, but I never realized I was potentially undermining somebody's feelings towards their speech or their experiences. My experiences are different from yours, different from the next person who stutters, the next person who stutters. Um, well, work for me may not work for you, you know, or my experiences as a mild to moderate stutterer right now would be different for, you know, someone who's, who has a higher volume of stuttering versus someone with a higher volume of stuttering with a more positive outlook versus same with a negative or whatever, right? We all have our journeys. Um, and thankfully, one of the uh, other golden uh, things that I learned from uh, from interviewing the SLPs, and I, I can freely give cred credit. So Eric X Raj, who does a lot of work with kids in the United States, you know, he told me, you know, it's okay to feel bad about your stuttering, and. This was in the context of what he would like to see in my book, in my next book for kids. It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay, um, you know, not to like, you don't even have to like your stuttering, you know, like those of us in the acceptance camp, me, you know, we tend to be, you know, a bit of overzealous or we kind of forget maybe that when we say accept your stuttering is a great way to go, you know, it may imply something else, you know, or someone may misinterpret it in any other way like we're better than you or whatever right even though we're not um uh saying that so that's in my head too uh and i think that's probably as close to drama or or you know sad you know that i'll get or serious maybe that's where i'm looking for serious um in my frankie bingy comics is to portray it's okay to not like you're starting or to have that frustrating day it's just um challenging for me <laughs> because I want to make sure that a child doesn't misinterpret it in a way like in any way that I or in any negative way like I'm saying you know because I don't want it to come across as stuttering is something to be bad about like if they don't continue the book <laughs> you know or like, like let's say they put the book down or or something or something like that because I because I remember when I was a kid I misinterpreted many things from cartoons you know, uh, from comic stuff, even, even I remember a story in Highlights for Children. Remember that magazine? The Highlights for Children? Um, it was a monthly, I think it was a monthly magazine for kids. Um, and there's one, and it had games, had short stories. And in one of them, I remember was a story about a kid who stuttered. And looking back, it was obvious. It was a positive story about stuttering but I didn't take it that way. I completely misunderstood it as stuttering is a problem, period. <laughs> so I got to be careful, like, uh, regardless of what, of, of what I draw. So, uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to need to have a team of um, people you know, to proofread, you know, am I coming across in any way that I, that I'm not intending? <laughs> You know, the the more that I listen to you, Dan, um, I'm thinking about uh, 
Dr. Paul Decker's uh, potential name for uh, his a module within his Science of Stuttering and Open Education Resource uh, program for students. What can Frankie Banky teach us about stuttering? I think that's it's, that's a an ideal name mm -hmm. for a, a a module or a, a sort of a course curriculum, whatever. But I'm thinking, Dan, this may uh, help help you as well. Uh, put put all you know all of the therapeutic uh, information you're receiving into one paper or you know one one presentation. What can Frankie Banky teach us about stuttering? And it's obvious that Frankie Banky can uh, uh, teach us a lot about stuttering, not only for people who stutter, for professionals, parents, uh, teachers. And I think that it, it has, 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 listening to you has, I mean, it has so much, I mean, the uh, therapeutic benefits has so much potential uh, that it, mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, it, it, you know, it, 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 in, in, in many ways can be overwhelming just to think about the potential. Would you agree or? Overwhelming? No, I think of more um, so many different ways. So many different ways. There's so many. No, I mean, I'm, sorry, Dan, I'm saying what's because stuttering yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm saying, I'm, saying no, over, no, over, over, I'm saying overwhelming in a positive sense, though. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, stuttering is complex, a stuttering experience, right? It's not, you know, like what I had mentioned just a few minutes ago of how our experiences and journeys are all different, right? Um, that's how complex it is. And yeah, having to actually, actually you know what, even, even the opposite <laughs> meaning of over, like the negative meaning of over, but yeah. Because um, even in fleshing out my next book, um, there's a long list of, I got to address this and this and this and this and that. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I could do all this. I can just... You know, so basically, it's not just my next book, my next series of books. So that's really what I'm hoping that I'll do. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there's so much that can be done. And then all that in regular speaking situations that have nothing to do with stuttering <laughs> in all these plots. So really, I'm designing myself into a corner here a bit, <laughs> but I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> well, well, Dan, I mean, this is... This is a this is a, you know, this has been a fascinating com you know, oh, conversation. And, one and, more and, thing, sorry, sorry, one more thing, one more thing. Yeah, one more thing. I just realized, yeah, what you probably meant was, yeah, everything you you know what Frankie Binky can't um teach everything about stuttering because all of our experiences are different. Right? I can't speak on behalf of an immigrant right or behalf you know things like that right um yeah go ahead <laughs> sorry just wanted to throw that in there <laughs> oh no that, that's uh, that's good dan so uh, dan uh, seriously this you know this has you know this has been a fascinating conversation and uh, and i'm looking forward to uh, to our discussion with with with, with you know dr didaka and uh, you, you and a few other others to to start, you know, fleshing out how how Banky Banky can fit into the uh, signs of stuttering module, you know, so that, so so that you know that you know, that you know that will be an exciting uh, discussion or this yeah. discussions, you know. Yeah, I'm really <clears throat> looking forward to it. To them. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, so I'm hope you know, hope you know, you know, hoping uh, down the road that uh, some of our SLPs will, will be utilizing Frankie Banky in, into their therapy within Newfoundland and Labrador, because I, I think uh, seriously, I mean, Frankie Banky, uh, the, you know, has so much potential in terms of, of of therapy, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's why I get so excited uh, drawing it and circling back to the beginning. Um, about Canadian SLPs, I will I will be present to Canadian SLPs. I can't believe my brain didn't even remind me of, of this at, at the, the beginning. Uh, not sure if you'll have this episode out in time, but I'll be giving a similar presentation, a uh, similar kind of sort of, uh, with Carla Di Domenico Antonio. Don't think I said her, no, you know, I'm mixing her last name with my <laughs> grandmother's last name. 
Carla Domenico-Antonio. Sorry, Carla, if you're listening, well, will we be where we will be talking about uh, Frankie Banky in the speech therapy room. And what's funny about how that workshop transpired, uh, she had uh, approached me to talk about, uh, uh, to ask, hey, do you want to present at the CSA conference um, on this? I thought, okay, sure. Um, but without knowing too much, I, again, like without knowing too much, like I don't know how you know, much about how SLPs are using my comics in therapy sessions. And then maybe a month later, um, I, I, I uh, was invited to speak at the Czech conference. And then as I was writing uh, or, or, put, or put, put, putting the presentation together, that's when it dawned on me, oh my gosh, this is almost the same as the one in the CSA that that's who that's who will beginning so that's when it also lit the light bulb in my head going yeah frankie bengi is more than just a comic strip like dude it's more than just a book that you wrote uh there's more and this thing's going to grow and i can't wait to see how what happens next <laughs> so thank you thank you for seeing um the value and connecting me with uh, uh Ah, oh, my brain, Paul. <laughs> there, there we go. Um, and and with his work, and for inviting me again here, uh, number two. Let's uh, try and go for a third time. <laughs> Make into a hat trick. <laughs> well, that uh, that uh, uh, sounds great, uh, Dan. Because I think you know, like I feel that once you know, once you know, once Paul has had has has, has a module uh, finalized for the university students. You know, I'm sure that we'll you know we'll have you back on some you know, some sort of law to you know to actually you know uh, introduce as well as present an overview of uh, of the module to our, our some sort of law listeners for sure wow. you know and uh, so sure. yeah so hopefully that the, the you know the, you know that will be done in the next few months. Thanks a lot for your time. Okay. okay. Take care. Thanks. Some Stutter Love, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering has so much to talk about. Let's start listening. This has been an episode of Some Stutter Love, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering. Some Stutter Love is hosted and produced by Greg O'Grady, Caitlin Mayo, Emily Murphy, Dr. Paul De Decker, and Luca Dinu. Some Stutter Law is available on Anchor, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. You can also check out the Some Stutter Law channel on YouTube to ask a question, send us a comment or, or a suggestion, or, or just to get in touch, find us online at Some Stutter Podcast on Instagram or at Some Stutter Law Pod. That's S-O-M-E-S-T-U-T-T-E-R-L-U-H pod on Facebook. And thanks for listening. <laughs>